Today's lesson will be on additional formatting techniques and options in Excel. First, I will show you the autofill feature, which if you have a series of numbers, days, or other normal series which Excel would know how to fill, you can use the autofill feature. For example, if I highlight numbers 1, 2, and 3, you'll see right down here there's this autofill handle when it turns to a plus sign. If you grab that and extend it downward, you'll see that it shows me next to that cursor what number it's filling in. And If I let go, it'll fill them in automatically, which is a lot easier than going through and typing them all. Similarly, if you had days of the week, you could extend that downward, and you'll see it shows up, repeats them as well. Date, we will drag that down. And you'll see after you do each one, there's this little autofill options box that pops up. If you click that, you'll see that there are many different options. You can have it just copy the cells. So I was the first three, which would be 13th, 14th, and 15th. If I hit copy cells, it just repeats that pattern throughout. If I change it, you can see that there are other options for the fill, like fill formatting only, which doesn't do a whole lot. Fill months, you'll see that it actually goes through each one and repeats it through the different months. So there are multiple options here depending on what you're actually doing. Fill series is what I'm going through right now, so I'll just click that and you'll see it extends it beyond. Here I have a formula, so here's 100, then the next cell says the one above it plus 4. And so if I take this last one and extend it downward, it just extends that formula all the way down. And here with month, You'll see if I grab this as well and extend it down, it'll change those similarly. If you look down here, we could do fill without formatting, and it wouldn't show that red highlighting with white text. In addition to the autofill, there's also the format painter. So whenever you have anything selected, let's say this January, February, March, the formatting on these cells, this red highlighting with white, I can take that, click the format painter up here, which has a little paintbrush next to it. If I click that, and let's say I will put it on these numbers, you'll see that it changes them to the other formatting. I'll undo that, and you'll see it'll also work with this bold text, if I use the format painter and do it here. You'll notice that after I let go of my selection, it changes the format, but then also stops the format painter from being active. But if you highlight an area and double click the format painter, it will keep the format painter selected, so you can click multiple selections, and it will do that until you click the format painter again. Another useful formatting technique is the freeze and unfreeze panes option. If you have a spreadsheet like this and you go to scroll down you'll see that all of the cells move together like they would in any spreadsheet. Sometimes you might want to have some sort of row titles or column titles display and not scroll so that it is always visible to the user. This can be achieved through the freeze panes. If I go to view you'll see there's a freeze panes option here if I click freeze panes where it says keeps rows and columns visible while the rest of the worksheet scrolls you'll see based on my current selection here it will freeze everything above and to the left of the current cell selection I'll click freeze panes and you'll see this large black line going across and up and down and now when I go through to scroll you'll see that the headings at the top remain in position but the data below it moves with the scrolling and you'll see if I go right everything to the right of number will start disappearing but number will stay over there you can go up top and hit unfreeze panes and another way you can do this is to go to the top right right above the scroll line you can grab this bar and move it downward and you'll see that it splits it into two areas based on where I put it. If you then go to freeze panes, it will only freeze the one you moved. Similarly, there's one for horizontal, which we could recreate what I had it to begin with, and hit freeze panes. 
So I will unfreeze those. In addition to formatting the cells, you can also format some of the spreadsheet and the visual components of it. So for example, you see how all of these are colored. If I right click one of the tabs, you'll see that there's this tab color option and I could go into that and choose whatever I wanted. Let's say it's a purple color and you'll see when I click off it, that tab is now purple. I will change it back to the orange option. Also if you right click these sheets, you can rename your sheets which hopefully you know how to do, but either clicking rename here or double clicking on the tab will allow you to rename it. And lastly, I will show you some printing options. One important aspect of printing is being able to set the print area. So I will take this table that I have, highlight it, whatever I want to be able to print. Then I will go up to page layout. There's a print area option, and I will click set print area. And you'll notice this dotted line now surrounds it, showing you that it's the print area. If I go to File, Print, you'll see now that this shows up. It doesn't show the table of contents up top. And if I typed anything else, it would not show that here. In addition to setting the print area, you have some settings options. You can choose a number of pages to print. You could have it print the active sheets. One of them that I use quite frequently is Print Selection. So if I went back here and I selected just days 1 through 4 and go back to File, Print, and change this to Selection, you'll see that it negates anything that wasn't in my selected area. This is helpful when you want to quickly print something that's in the middle of a, a large spreadsheet and you want to make sure you just get what you have selected. The portrait or landscape orientation is helpful, whether it's sideways or upright, which kind of paper you're using and what scaling you want. One of them that I find very useful under scaling is this fit all columns on one page or fit all rows on one page as you can make sure that whatever you have will either fit everything across or all the rows on one page. Custom scaling options is important as well. If you click that you can usually put a number of pages here and fit to which would be let's say you want it to be one page wide by three pages tall, it would fit it to that. Hope you found these formatting techniques useful, and thanks for watching.